Hi folks. Lately my email inbox has been getting a lot of these emails from various uh, Buddhist centers and organizations around the USA who are taking upon themselves to give you know me and you and anybody else who subscribes to them their advice on how to be an ethical person you know in short how to be an ethical person and the advice they're giving is usually very specific and you know intended to, to fulfill a certain purpose and and about a certain thing and I don't even want to go into the specifics myself because we kinda all know <laughs> what I'm talking about here probably and last night I was giving my talk to the Angel City Zen Center and I kinda wanted to broach this idea in explaining the way Dogen dealt with this because somebody asked Dogen has this passage which I cite constantly called Shoaku Makusa which was the basis for my book Don't Be a Jerk and one of our participants Colin asked if Dogen gives you any advice on anti-jerk behavior you know and, and, and that's kind of a, the the buzzword these days is anti you know anti whatever the whatever the thing is that you oppose in the world you're gonna give advice to people how to be anti that thing well Dogen is not a guy who is very anti he certainly certainly had plenty of things he could have been anti about so it would be a huge mistake to sort of read back into history and think that that he just wasn't anti anything because he just didn't have any difficulty with anybody because he certainly had plenty of difficulties in his life but he tends to be more pro these the things that he wants to talk about and one of the best places to see this is in a chapter called Bodhisattva Shishobo. Four elements of a Bodhisattva's social relations. That's the Nishijima cross translation. I'm not sure what the other translators title it, but they're probably all kind of similar. And in here he gives four pieces of advice for how to be, how to, how to, how to sort of proactively do something that's not you know, as I put it in, don't be a jerk, jerk-like behavior. So they are, in short, free giving, kind speech, helpful conduct, and identity of purpose, which Nishima and Cross translate as cooperation. So let's see what he has to say here. Free giving means not being greedy. Not being greedy means not coveting. Not coveting means, in everyday language, not courting favor. And it's interesting that he uses not courting favor. And I'm not sure exactly, the, I'm, I'm kind of looking at the little uh, footnote here, and it uh, doesn't really say this. Courting, uh, the Japanese word he uses is hetsurao, uh, which is uh, curry favor through groveling flattery, etc. So, you know, cour courting favor. And it's a kind of a funny um, connection to make but basically not being greedy and being generous with what you have freely giving what you have uh, these can be material objects or you know spiritual objects spiritual objects is probably not a good idea non-material objects just uh, giving acts of kindness and things like that and one of the funniest lines here that I always love to point out is earning a living and doing productive work are originally nothing other than free giving so even doing a job is a kind of free giving if you look at it that way and he gives some examples of people of the past who, who did these things and says when we can give up even one speck of dust for free giving though it is our own act we will quietly rejoice in it because we will have already received the authentic transmission of one of the virtues of the Buddhas and because for the first time we'll, we will be practicing one of the methods of a bodhisattva. So even giving, oops, lost another bookmark. So even giving the smallest of things is, is an example of free giving, so you, it doesn't have to be anything elaborate or great. The next one is kind speech, and kind speech is obviously in a bit of short supply these days. Actually, I don't think it's in as short supply as it was a couple of weeks ago, but uh, we have to be we have to be proactive in doing it. We have to kind of deliberately go out of our way to find times to speak kindly to others and to bring kind speech into the world. Uh, Dogen says, when meeting living beings, first of all, to feel compassion for them, this is kind speech, and to offer caring and loving words, that's his definition of kind speech. Broadly, it is their 
being no rude or bad words. And I remember looking this up in the Tanahashi translation, and they changed that to something like there being, you shouldn't use bad or rude words. But uh, what Dogen says is more literally translated as there are no bad or rude words. So um, you can read that any way you like, but I think it means that you can't automatically put certain words into categories of being bad or rude because depending on the context they might not be but we know when we are using words in a bad or rude way so don't do that in secular societies there are polite customs of asking others if they are well that's a good one to ask these days in Buddhism there are the words take good care of yourself and there's the disciples greeting how are you now these are very common greetings and Dogen is putting them into this category of kind speech which is important to remember anything you do that's a nice thing to do that's a nice thing to say is part of fulfilling this bodhisattva vow of using kind speech. Whether in defeating adversaries or in promoting harmony among gentlefolk, kind speech is fundamental. So even in defeating adversaries, kind speech is fundamental. So, you know, try to use those kind words. To hear kind speech indirectly etches an impression in the heart and in the soul. Remember, kind speech arises from a loving mind, and the seed of a loving mind is compassion. So compassion, uh, feeling for others what you feel for yourself. We should learn that kind speech has the power to turn around the heavens. It is not merely the praise of ability. So it's big stuff. The next one is helpful conduct. Uh, this means, according to Dogen, utilizing skillful means to benefit living beings, high or low. For example, by looking into the distant or near future and e employing expedient means. So just kind of seeing what you think they might need in the future. Uh, people have taken pity on stricken turtles and taken care of sick sparrows. And this is a reference to some old Chinese legends that you don't really need to know about, but the idea being that even taking care of something like a, a stricken turtle, like a turtle on its back, or a sick sparrow, this is an example of helpful conduct. So even the little things you do are helpful conduct. You don't always have to go for the, you know, the big thing. In fact, there's a certain amount of greed in that. If you are limiting your helpful conduct to things that are you know, the huge problems of the world, then you're being a bit greedy in your helpful conduct. You're being a bit greedy for maybe glory or, or something or, or just, you know, wanting to, to affect this huge change. Don't worry so much about that. Do the small changes that you can do in the immediate present. And that's what helpful conduct is. And finally, the last one is cooperation, which is actually in Japanese doji, which means identity of task. Uh, so that's important to know. Uh, it is not being contrary to oneself and not being contrary to others. For example, the human Tathagata, that's Buddha, identified himself with humanity. Judging from this identification with the human world, we can suppose that he might identify himself with other worlds. So, you know, aliens, right? Uh, and actually, the Buddhists did sort of believe in aliens. I mean, they didn't uh, conceive of them the way we do now, but they believed there were other worlds and other intelligent beings out there, and that the Buddha was something bigger than a mere human being, but he came and identified himself as a human being and worked to help human beings by invoking this idea of doji, identity of task. So he's trying to help us in our task to realize ourselves. And he mentions this old poem which says, The sea does not refuse water, therefore it is able to realize its greatness. Mountains do not refuse earth, therefore they are able to realize their height. So this is the idea that even this little bit you do helps everything. So never pass up an opportunity for doing cooperative behavior. So those are Dogen's four things to do if you want to be kind of an anti-jerk. Uh, but he doesn't phrase them in a way that's anti-anything. He's, he's phrasing them in a way that's, that's 
pro whatever he's trying to promote and I really think that's a good way to go so there's my message for you today I'm gonna go back to writing my book because I'm getting hot and heavy in writing it and I want to get back to it so I'm gonna cut this uh, right here and if you want to donate to helping me write a book uh, here's the information below uh, you can donate uh, via the links I'm giving you below and that really helps me out a lot again as I keep saying ever since these lockdowns began I know some people are hurting so don't put your out there because you think uh, you know I'm in desperate need I I'm doing all right but your donations are why I'm doing all right so I thank you very much for your continued donations and I want to get back to my book so we'll see you later bye